Dilution-based susceptibility test methods are similar to the Kirby-Bauer in that we start by making a uh, suspension of bacteria of known density. We're using the microscan system here, and that allows us to use these uh, special inoculation wands which pick up a calibrated amount of bacteria that allows us to generate our McFarland 0.5 quickly and easily. We start by touching three colonies and then removing the wand collar in order to get rid of excess bacteria. The wand is then inoculated into the liquid culture media, and that media is then shaken vigorously to ensure that the suspension is homogeneous. Our broth is then carefully transferred to the reservoir of the dispensing device to avoid the formation of bubbles within the system. The lid is replaced and then we gently tap on the four corners of the device to break surface tension within the system. You can see here that the lid of the dispensing device contains these 96 micropipettes, which are responsible for transferring our bacterial suspension from the reservoir into our susceptibility test plate, which you can see here on the right. We use this specialized pipetter system to draw up our bacteria. As you can see here, it's being primed. Transfer the entire device over to our 96 well plate. Release the suspension and then move the sampling device back to the reservoir. Once the 96 well plate has been inoculated, it's ready for incubation. We do that overnight at 35 degrees Celsius in ambient air, and then our plate is ready for reading the next day. This can be done either manually using a light box, as you see here, where we inspect each well for bacterial growth as indicated by the presence of a pellet, or we can use a semi-automated system, as you see here, where a, a plate reader um, inspects each well for us. We start by inputting all of our sample characteristics into the computer program, including the patient ID and the bacterial um, species, load our plate into the carousel, and then the machine automatically reads our plate for us. It determines whether or not there's growth in each well, determines the MIC for each drug, and then categorically interprets those MICs using the CLSI guidelines based on the species ID that was input into the form. Here you can see what the automated system interface looks like. It's very simple and easy to use and a really um, great alternative to manual input of, of sample data. Of course, MICs can also be analyzed uh, manually by comparing results with the CLSI breakpoints. In this cartoon, which depicts the entire broth microdilution process, in step five, or the bottom right-hand corner of the cartoon, you can see a sample plate um, which has bacterial growth indicated by the presence of an orange circle and inhibited growth by a cream-colored circle. This is what a broth microdilution plate looks like in real life. Here you can see an image of the underside of a plate, and I think you can appreciate the uh, pellets of growth in certain wells, indicating that the organism is able to survive in the presence of antimicrobial um, located in that well. Here, each positive well is indicated by the presence of a plus, and if we zoom in on just one of those drugs, in this case tetracycline, you can see that we have growth at 1, 2, 4, and 8 micrograms per milliliter, but no growth at 16 micrograms per milliliter, indicating that the MIC is in fact 16 micrograms per mil. These results can then be manually interpreted uh, by comparison with the CLSI guidelines. So this is the online version of the CLSI guidelines where we find our interpretive criteria for susceptibility tests. And as you can see over here on the left, we have all of the different organisms we might be interested in listed. This is where we'll find each of our sets of breakpoints. So if we go to table 2C, you can see breakpoints for Staphylococcus. At the top of the guideline are all of the standardization criteria. So as I mentioned previously, the type of media, 
um, the density of, of suspension, incubation, temperature, time, etc. As we scroll through the breakpoints, you can see the various uh, interpretive criteria uh, by drug and organism. And we're just going to go down to the cephalosporins as an example. So here you can see um, our interpretive criteria for sefovacin, um, for dogs, for skin and soft tissue infections, for the organism Staphylococcus pseudintermedius. With a 30 microgram disc, a zone diameter of greater than or equal to 24 millimeters would be considered susceptible, 21 to 23 millimeters would be considered intermediate, and less than or equal to 20 millimeters would be considered resistant. Similarly, just to the right, we have our MIC interpretive criteria, where an MIC of less than or equal to 0.5 would be considered susceptible, one intermediate, and greater than or equal to two resistant.